compression. So it's a word we often hear in golf instruction. It's a word a lot of us golfers are looking for. We're looking for more compression with our arms. So in this video, we're gonna look at what is compression and how do we create it? So we're ever trying to do anything with our swing, it's always good to start with the end in mind. So let's start with what do we need the club to be doing through impact? to achieve compression. So there's two data points really we'd be looking for. One, the red alignment stick is gonna represent the angle of attack. So the angle of attack is, is the club traveling down or is the club traveling up through impact? The other angle we gotta look at is the dynamic loft. So we could have a lot of dynamic loft, think of your pitching wedge, or we could have a low dynamic loft. It's the relationship between these two data points that creates what's called the spin loft. Now the larger the spin loft, generally the more spin that will be put on the ball, the less compression, lower ball speeds. The smaller the angle of the spin loft, the more compression we can put on the golf ball. So really to compress the ball is determined by our ability to control angle of attack and its relationship to the dynamic loft. So what can we do within our setup and within our swing to achieve that? We're gonna look at a player called Espen Kofstad. He played here recently in the DP World Tour in Valderrama. He was hitting these really low compressed ball flights off the tee. So we're gonna have a look at his swing in detail and see is there anything that we can take from his movement, his setup, that we can put into our own game to help us find that all important compression. So here's Kofstad from a face-on perspective and a down-the-line perspective here on the right. So the first thing we're going to do is look at, again, start with the end in mind. Let's have a look at how the club is moving through impact. So when we're looking for angle of attack and we're looking for dynamic loft, how much spin loft we have, we're going to have a better view from a face-on position here. So we're just going to bring him down into impact or just before impact. Now the first piece of the puzzle is angle of attack. So we can see how the club head here is traveling on this direction down into the ball. So it's traveling on a descending angle of attack. That's the first piece of the spin loft. So the angle of attack is traveling down. Now it doesn't have to be traveling down excessively to compress the ball. It only needs to be slightly descending. So for example, it could be two, three, four degrees of an angle of attack downwards it doesn't need to be very steep in order to compress the ball so angle of attack will draw the red line there that's our direction the club head is traveling at at impact the second piece then is the dynamic loft so how much loft is on the club at impact so the loft would be coming from the club face here so generally the ball you can kind of see how the ball is launched there the ball will launch just slightly underneath where the dynamic loft is so this is the spin loft that we talked about just previously, which is the angle created between the dynamic loft and the angle of attack. So the smaller this angle, the more compression we're gonna be able to place onto the golf ball. So the angle of attack is the red, the green is the dynamic loft. So if a player is struggling to compress the ball, they might have too much dynamic loft. So the loft might be much more, which would increase this distance between angle of attack and dynamic loft, which would create less compression and less ball speed. And that sometimes happens when we don't have any shaffling. So if we kind of have a look at where this player's shaffling is, so if I draw a line from the hands down to the club head, you can see how that's leaning forward slightly. So if we were to create a line down the shaft and then one that's just vertical, so approximately, we'll get an angle here. So we'll see that's approximately seven degrees of forward shaffling. So that creates a lower dynamic loft, which is the loft coming out of the club face, coupled with a slightly descending angle of attack. That's our low spin loft, and that is our low compressed ball flight. So now that we have an idea of, okay, how that club is moving through impact, let's have a look at the swing and see what is he doing within his swing to be able to create those impact alignments? So straight away there, we can see the ball position is slightly back in the stance. That's going to enable him to get those hands slightly forward. Not so important to have the hands slightly forward, very far to dress, but through impact is where we want to be creating that shaffling. But if we have a look at then at the motion of the swing, so we'll start back, there's an early pressure shift into his trail side. So the pressure is moving to the trail side early in the takeaway. 
But as he starts to complete his backswing, once he gets past the takeaway, really, you're actually going to see his mass and his pressure move towards the target. So as he's completing his backswing, you'll see his pressure already begin to move towards the target. So he's getting most of his mass, most of his pressure into his lead side. So having that move, getting the pressure to the lead side is really, really important to be able to make contact with the ground after the ball and create that slightly descending angle of attack. So we'll take him into halfway down. So we'll see the pressure's moving left. We'll get him into delivery. So he gets this really nice delivery position we've spoke about in previous videos where he gets that trail hand, trail elbow, and the trail shoulder matched up together. So the hands are coming back underneath his chest now. He's got his pressure, most of his pressure on his lead side. But the interesting thing here now from this point of the swing, the only thing that's going to be traveling down is the club head. So the club head's going to have that descending angle of attack. But everything else, so his lead hip is going to begin extending, traveling up. His lead shoulder is going to begin extending, traveling up. And especially his hand path is going to begin extending and traveling up. So we'll watch this through impact. So you'll see how his hands begin to rise through impact. Lead hip rises, left shoulder rises as the club head travels down. And it's this extending of the pivot and rotation of the pivot that creates that forward shaft lean that we spoke about there just previously. So the shaft lean is being created by how the pivot is extending and rotating through the ball. The shaft lean creates that lower dynamic loft through the hitting area. So really important where some players will get in trouble where they try to have a descending angle of attack to compress the ball, but they stay down for too long. All the work done to create that great spin loft is done pretty much by halfway down into the downswing. The pressure's left. Then from there, we're actually extending up and allowing the club head only to compress down. So we end up getting into this fully extended position into the finish. From a down the line perspective, you're going to see when we get into delivery here, you're going to see his hands and his club head line up. You're going to see his right shoulder. It's going to start moving out on top of the ball, which is going to help cover that golf ball. So we see that ball first contact. The hands will begin to curve leftwards then through impact and then nice and tall into that extended finish. So that's how we compress the golf ball. We've got to get a low spin loft, manage the angle of attack, manage the dynamic loft. We do that through our setup, how we're moving our pressure and extending into the finish. Thank <laughs> you.